Hello everyone and welcome to my new Touch Designer tutorial and today I want to talk about the shaded toy, how to convert it to Touch Designer and more specifically how to integrate it in your environment, how to feed uh, your colors, your chops and uh, maybe even sops to the shader and how to combine uh, your tops and shader tops and so on and how to build a user interface for this uh, if you don't know uh, the shader toy is a great resource about uh, gel cell shaders uh, pixel shaders where artists and mathematicians uh, shows its works and uh, many things in shaded toy it would be very hard to replicate in touch designer alone without any gel cell like uh, look at this for example uh, this example maybe you can do it with a um, bunch of noise function and uh, feedback with some transform but uh, with this one or th this one it would be really really hard so gel cell is a very nice thing to know but if you gonna learn gel cell the right uh, academic way you will start to learn uh, things like how to make uh, some color ramps some I don't know blurred circles some basic lines and functions and uh, in my opinion it's very it's kind of boring so the my way of learning gel cell is to took and find something interesting on shader toy and convert it to touch designer and uh, integrate it so uh, uh, first thing uh, i want to show you is uh, automatic conversion there is uh, recently the Matthew Watcher upload this nice tool called uh, TD Shader Toy, which converts any almost any shader toy shader to Touch Designer automatically, and it's good to use if you want just to convert it and not change it, because here is my conversion of a shader if you go inside there is a lot of chops there is a lot of components if you go inside the component there is a lot of operators there is some parameters not so much so it's uh, really messy and it's still very good if you don't know any GLSL and want just to uh, do automatic conversion and use it for example in your as your texture or something else the next level of converting would be read uh, this nice uh, chapter of uh, introduction to touch designer book and this chapter is written by matthew hedlin and it covers the most of thing you need to know how about the conversion shader and what you need to change what's the difference of syntax between the shader toy and touch designer because shader toy it's not a, it uses webgl and webgl it's not the same as opengl and uh, there is some variables that built in in shader toy and there is some variables that built in in touch designer and you need to know it a bit I would cover some of the things that uh, written here but I really recommend you to read it by yourself because some things like um, what uh, like cube mapping like working with mouse I wouldn't cover today but you can read it by yourself because I want to more concentrate on what to do after conversion how to integrate in in your pipeline and also th in this chapter there is some things that uh, not covered 
about some situation in, co in the conversion. I will show it to you later. And another great resource, of course, is uh, the good old wiki. Mostly we will work with shader toy shaders in GLSL top because it's only a pixel shader. So you couldn't, um, you couldn't easily use these shaders as a material, as a GLSL mat. So it's most of the time it's just uh, GLSL top. And today uh, I wanna work with this series of shaders call, called Maze Worms from Fabrice Nieret. And Fabrice also have a nice uh, shader toy unofficial tutorial. Sometimes it can be helpful if some code works in shader toy and not working in touch designer, because maybe you will find some answers how some specific function like i don't know i date or some uh, buffer or something else works in shader toy and uh, google it and find it in a wiki how to convert it properly in dash designer okay i want to start with uh, Maze Worm Graffiti 3D and more specifically uh, here in the first comment he, ha he, ha la la la. he has a <laughs> more cleaned up and commented version. So click it and here we go. We have, uh, why do I choose this? I choose this because first of all this one example of shaders that doesn't convert uh, really well in automatic converter. It's just stops. It's just drawn this uh, thing and stops while it needs to do more stuff. The other thing is because it has a buffer that uh, reference to the buffer itself. And uh, it's a bit tricky how to use it and he also Fabrice really 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 like to use some uh, super short uh, short version of code and for example here it's uh, code is very different from what you could find on uh, introduction to touch designer book Okay, and the last thing before we begin. Uh, <laughs> the last thing we bec before we begin is I want to say you don't really need to. Well, uh, okay, you don't need to understand GLSL to do what we're gonna do today. Because I never learned actually GLSL. I just start with uh, messing with shaders, changing some things in code and see how it works and step by step I, I do realize that I need to read about this function, about that function and I think it's very not boring way of learning GLSL. It's absolutely non-systematic, absolutely non-academical, maybe not the best way of learning GLSL, but it's interesting. So if you have just a super basic understanding of GLSL, or even no understanding, this tutorial should be, yeah, it should be good enough for you and I hope you understand everything I'm gonna say today. So let's start. Let's start uh, with new container. I called it toot, toot. And let's drop uh, our GLSL. The difference between GLSL and GLSL multi is the amount of uh, inputs. But you know, you could uh, sometimes, and in this case as well, you can change top type 
and you can change it to jello cell mousy or change it to jello cell back again and i think uh, three inputs would be enough for us today okay uh, when I'm going to start to convert uh, shaders, and I converted some of them, uh, quite a many of them, actually, usually they start from understanding the how uh, how it looks. Okay, here, for example, we have the image is the output that uh, reference to it to the A. A is buffer A. The buffer A is reference to itself and we also have a common tab which has a code that can be referenced in any other uh, folder. By the way, it's also not, uh, not described here, so... Okay. Uh, dun 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 dun. And now I'm gonna replicate it in Touch Designer. So let's say it's our buffer A because everything, most of the code happens here. We need another JLA cell which would work as image. You could change any, you could use any other name. And because uh, the buffer reference itself, the proper way of replicating it in Touch Designer would be like this. You need to some empty top. So probably constant, constant top is a base choice. And set your desired resolution. Oops. Uh, and in many shaders it's really good to use uh, 60 bin floats or even 32 bits okay constant then we need feedback and use a uh, feedback as input first input to our shader From buffer A, you need to have a null and reference this null in feedback. So it looks like this. And I like to call it like uh, every return. And usually it's a good idea to set this constant to 0, 0, 0, 0. and let's start from image because it's shorter uh, I really recommend you to use some good editor not a notepad not a built-in uh, editor because the syntax highlights it's really important it's really helpful. Okay, uh, I wouldn't delete this. So let's go to image. Let's copy this and uh, sorry, and let's paste it here. Okay, just do it like this. Uh, let's paste it here. Okay. Uh, as you can see here what we passed and we have some differences between the function in shader toy called the main image it's a main function in shader toy and in touch designer it's the main function called main and it always will be present in your shader so we need to rewrite this main function as described here So, uh, uh, about brackets, 
you can uh, just do it the same way as in touch designer not because you need to but to understand it better so let's get rid of this this string should be the somewhere in the beginning it's an important thing in touch designer so it's your output okay and let's save and of course we have a lot of errors undefined variable o undefined variable t undefined variable u because as i said before the author of this shader really like to use the short version of code because normally normally it's uh, void out for a color la 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 so let's start to change o is usually is fret color so we can change it to fret color and fret color will be our output and it equals to for TU and what is TU and TU is uh, defined in this common tab so there is uh, two ways to deal with it first of all you can just copy this and insert in in every shader you will have here in in converting just like that Oops. And you have uh, different errors. Oops. Uh, different errors. Text of fetch, it uh, asks for the channel zero, and channel zero in uh, shade editor is this uh, first buffer. So it's the first input in touch designer, and in touch designer it would be std to d inputs square bracket zero so let's see what we have an undefined variable u and variable u in this case uh, again uh, here is a um, like out vector o in vector u usually it's uh, out vector frac color in vector frac chord so you need to change it to gel frac chord as mentioned in the book uh, do, 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 do. and because it's a vector 2 you need to set it as xy and now it's compi compiled successfully uh, good the other way of using this would be sometimes it's better so I'm gonna show you just add a new dot called it some way let's, let's call it the same common just pass, paste the same code here and reference it in our code and references it's um, I think it's recent uh, function in touch designer so let's comment this and write include and uh, we need to put a name our name was a uh, common and we still don't have any errors okay but that was easy now let's work with this part uh, the good thing to have uh, a reference to that with include is that if the same 
code used in buffer A, we just need to reference it as well. And we don't need to copy paste it again. And it's especially important if you have like uh, five buffers or more. So let's copy this. Let's paste it here. Uh, I've, uh, I delete the uh, line. Let's copy paste it. <coughs> and what do we have? We have a lot of errors. Okay, we need resolution and time. And uh, the way to do it is to add on vectors page. I prefer to use uh, not the uh, letter I and not uh, I resolution and I time, but put the letter U because it's uniform and it's a common way in shaders inside touch designer. So it's just convenient to keep the same syntax in every shader, but it's not necessary. You can uh, name your variables as you or you can do something like this. But the proper naming is of course better. I don't like to write resolution, so I have res. And we need to reference our resolution, then the fastest way it would be me width and me height. Oops. Me height. Okay, and the same with time. Uh, you can use me time seconds, you could use apps time seconds. I prefer me time seconds because it's uh, good when your FPS isn't really 60 because with apps time seconds, the seconds goes faster than your FPS. Uh, you could you you could add apps time seconds as well. You could uh, add up to four values. And now you need to reference it in your code. So let's put it here. It would be uniform, uniform vec2 because we have two values, u res, and semicolon, yeah. I'm not sure, it's called semicolon in English? Yeah, I, I think so. And now just uh, change uh, any i resolution to u res. I just do find and replace, replace everything, and the same with time. Mm. You can use the float because you need only one parameter from time, but you can use vector two as well, and in or even vector three. And in that case, you could add different times and. Later, you you can see which one works better. For example, one time variable would be I don't know audio responsive, and other would be just at me time seconds. So you could test things. But because it's uh, vector two, and here it was a float, you will need to reference it not just u time but u time dot x because you need only first value from this variable okay let's save uh, let's save we have a lot of undefined variable blah 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 uh, yeah of course we need to properly make our loop and okay uh, because the output here called O, the one way would be it's to do like I did here. It's call it frag color and output frag color. The other way would be okay if you if in code uses O, and you could change any O, 
but un but you could do it other way you could change the output and call it not a frag color as default but call it o and you need to define u and u equals gl uh, i always forgot is it short or let's see no no it's not okay yeah you should start with capital f and we have undefined variable t and it's ag it's again about this this string of code so let's put the same uh, okay open jail requires main to take number m oh, oh, oh yeah 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 I got to delete this stuff. Blah blah blah. Undefined variable u invalid character. La 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 la. Yeah, the debugging shaders. It's not a simple thing because you don't have uh, many information. But I think I know what's going on here. Uh, I think I know. <laughs> or maybe not let me think a bit let me think a bit valid and different oh yeah twenty five And yeah, here I know what we have. Look, and in this uh, string 25, we reference to the random function, which defined here. And random function takes x as argument. And when we use the same x as our second uh, vector in u time, or uh, first first value in u time it thinks that he, he needs to change this x with what we passed here so the one way would be to change x to r because in shader you could use uh, x y z v you could use r g b a and you could use s t p I'm not sure you could google it and uh, you could use any of this you just need to be consistent in the same variables so u time r should work let's see okay and now pixel shader compile successfully but something not working because we need to pulse our feedback and now we have it our shader works first stage completed okay now let's start to modernize it to clear it clean up and uh, integrate it in touch designer better by the way another way of using of getting rid of the same problem would be to use x but to change it to something like because it's random we could uh, use the input uh, call input as seed and it's working as well we have some issues here interesting well let's look at this uh, shader it's actually do nothing 
to you. It's just ask you to display buffer A, uh, display this shader. So probably you could get rid of it and use just a no. And everything still works. Okay, let's make a button to reset it. Because reset, probably it, we will need it quite a lot during this tutorial. Call it reset. Put a no, call it resetter. Uh, resetter and reference it here. And we need to change it to momentary. So now we have a simple way to reset big button. And we will make another button later. And let's call it final or something else. But now because we have only one shader, there is no point to still have this separate common that we could just insert this in our shader. So instead of include common, we just include this. And everything still works. So let's get rid of this. Now, uh, let's see. Here is uh, our parameters. It's, uh, it's commented and it's called line width and the number of worms. But even in many shaders, there is no comments. Like, uh, okay, it's still commented, but in, in many shaders, there is no comments. Uh, so you need to figure out by yourself somehow. And what I usually have a tendency to do is to just find some numbers and try to change it. Okay, what would it be if I change it to 15? Oh, it's doing different width. So probably it's width. What if I change something to this? Um, I don't see any difference, so maybe it's something not very important. What if I change, I don't know, this. Nothing, okay. Oh, no, there is some, some issues, it's, yeah, there is something. Something going on, but I don't quite understand right now what's going on. And if I don't understand, let's change it the other way. It was two, now it would be a three. And let's reset. Oh, so it's a canvas. Okay. And so on and so on, and you can change any, any number and figure out one by one what does it mean. If you don't have comments and of course if you have comments it's much easier and now let's start to get rid of this uh, constant predefined variables and put it here in our vectors so we have what we find already we have number of worms the author of shader call these things as worms. And we have a 50, we have a radius, and we also find the canvas. And I call the canvas. It was uh, 2.4, and the radius was. I usually prefer to start with the same numbers, same, same values, 
as in original shader and uh, change it later. So now let's change this. Let's comment this string and write instead uniform uh, float enum. Uh, let's copy paste it. Let's copy paste it. Let's copy paste it. Uh, but I use the different names. Uh, so now I could do again, I have two ways. I could redefine it again and say it's like a float r equals you know. Oh, you're right. Because, because originally it was called r. Undefined variable and, oh yeah, I know. And the other way would be to change the n of r to you know. So where we have our n, we have it here. You could find and uh, replace it, or you can do it manually. And it works. Uh, I prefer actually not to redefine define and redefine it again. So I would prefer to change R everywhere to radius. Everything works fine. Let's get rid of this. Undefined variable on string 43 and 55. 55, 55, 33. Okay. Everything works again. And a canvas. Canvas 2.4. Um, and if you look at uh, where ah here, if you look at this string, it tells us something about output. We divide our resolution in half, and then we add something. So, my default value was two point four. So you could guess or I can guess that if I put the same number as we have division here, so just a two, we don't have any canvas. Am I right? Yeah, I'm right. So probably it's better to set canvas as 0.4 and says is equals L plus a canvas. It's just to make more sense to me. Okay, and let's try to change, for example, number of forms. Is it work? Is it working? Yeah, it seems so. And let's change the radius. Yeah, it's working. And now, of course, you could use some LFO, for example, LFO, let's have offset 1.5 and 0.5, and let's use it as a radius. So now we have the net, uh, let's make some, let's make it more obvious, like two, like one, and yeah. As you can see, now we change our radius. But I prefer to have the one chop for all of variables and usually I call it param uh, because it uh, because it's uh, then your network would be nice and tidy. Param and in param, I prefer to 
have the same names as here so we change your red let's call it your red let's have another one constant one with uh, you know Swifty let's merge it let's put it here and reference it And what it gives you now you could have you know, copy this paste this and have another set of parameters like for example with other offset with other number of worms with other canvas and you could add a switch here switch chop here and now you could easily switch between different set of parameters like we have this one we can switch into this one and so on so it's a super easy way to make a different to keep different parameters that you like for your shader the better way would be to create some deaths and store it in deaths or use some component. You could find many of components for storing your parameters in forum or in Touch Designer help group in Facebook or write it yourself. But I leave it like this. Okay. The next I'm gonna do actually this particular code why is it so strange something th strange going on on this side but probably it's some errors in shader itself I'm not sure Anyway, I don't really like this shader. Uh, so let's um, find something more, more beautiful of the same series. Uh, it's called Maze Worms. It's called Maze Worms. And probably yeah, I like this one. And as if I put it here, side by side, you could see there is some difference. First of all, uh -huh, we have another parameter called DA. It looks the same, it looks the same. And the main difference going on here. So let's uh, copy her back to VO. Let's copy from this to this. And let's try to. First, let's try to paste it here. Just, uh, we don't need this string. And let's comment this so it wouldn't interrupt us undefined variable r r because we called it radius now where where, where is r r is here and 65 65 can find it ah and da and da 
dA is the turn angle at heat. So let's just add another variable here. Let's call it U angle 0 0.5 and the same here U angle reference 8 ah oh, we don't have it here okay let's just switch this index put a reference and we need the same in our code A and the A. Whoa, something going on, something strange going on. Maybe because it's our radius is too big uh, and we have different color models, but overall it seems to work to me. Let's do it like this. Okay, uh, let me pause for a moment. I will try to understand what's going on here and I will back soon. Okay, uh, I'm back and I find the issue. It's actually really interesting. Look, we have some issues here and we still have it but if we change our pixel format from 16 bit to 32 bits everything works fine so probably it's a good idea to start from 32 bits float every time with shaders so you don't have any weirdly looking things because it's kind of not easy to figure out where it comes from. Okay, and I also noticed that I already recorded in uh, 45 minutes, so let's try to speed up a bit. Let's start to speed up a bit. And so I'm no, not gonna talk you how to do the same with other variables. And I will turn it into more interesting stuff like here here it's we have a coloring scheme but even if we wouldn't call coloring scheme you could by vec4 you could understand that you're dealing either with uh, two xy coordinates or maybe xyz and something else or probably color because color is rgba and let's try to get rid of this and use our colors from Touch Designer. So, what we have here? We have a loop that goes from 0 0.5 to unum, and unum is the number of our worms. So, probably it waits for and it multiplied by p so probably it waits for uh, the amount of color should be equals to you know so let's add a top let's add a noise because noise looks nice let's put it to 32 bits float and let's use our variable as the first input and string intervals one and of course we don't need it to be monochromatic and let's put a new call it uh, colors and input it as a second input uh, 
sum. Now we need to first of all uh, here uses the mix function. You could Google it and find find out that it mixes uh, two variables, first one and second one, with uh, this component. Let's start from using the single color because it's just way simpler. Let's comment this and multiply it by single color. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it would be called Texel Fetch. Uh, Texel Fetch. Uh, STD inputs. We have the second inputs which means one and I know that Texel fet fetch needs the integers so it would be ivec2 ivec2 uh, as you can s uh, okay you couldn't see here ivec2 and the first value should be the uh, col uh, the row of pixels, and the second one it's no, it's opposite. First one is a column, and second one is a row. So the the variable uses in this for loop is x. So we need x pixel in the row number zero, and Texel fetch also needs. Uh, load variable load parameter and load parameter it's how you interpolate pixels and just put it to zero always <laughs> so would it work let's reset yeah and it works and uh, let's add for example, ramp, because I want to show you a little bit different stuff. Let's add a ramp, the same uh, resolution, same parameters. Let's actually now, let's add a constant. Let's add a constant. constant same resolution same pixel format and let's have uh, one string mm, I don't know red and as you remember we have a mix of two different colors and V it's a lifetime of a uh, worm so let's try to replicate it and have um, two different colors so it goes from one color to another color so we need two constants for example red and uh, blue let's combine it uh, with layout uh, top to bottom Resolution, custom resolution, la la la, fifty by two, and nearest pixel, nearest pixel, transform layout, fit best, uh, native resolution. Okay, so let's can connect it instead here. Now it should be all blue. Why is it interesting? I thought it would be all red, but anyway. So let's replicate this. We need our text of patch with a first row 
as instead of this color and instead of this color we need to use our uh, second row and let's see and it goes from blue to red and it goes super quickly so maybe we don't want to do it super quickly and let's try to change this parameter i don't know how it works maybe it will be this way no it wastes it's even more quicker quicker quick quicker anyway <laughs> yeah it's, it's too slow so maybe 0 0.7 something like this and again if you want you could you put another uniform another variable put it here on vectors do it by yourself now you know how to do it so it's up to you okay so this way you could change the colors from predefined colors in the shader to your colors and you could use a lot of different tools to generate this uh, parameters for example with noise again we need two strings and you could change how different how fast noise will change so not only so it wouldn't change not only by time but also by the worm itself so every worm would be a different color and uh, you could you could do all the things you could do with noise as you know uh, yeah it's too fast All right. Another thing is this angle here, 0 0.5. It's angle in radians. Uh, and I don't know how it's for you, but I don't really think in radians. I prefer degrees. So let's change the angle from radians to degrees. So you could put degrees in the parameters because it's easier to understand. Mm -hmm. And you could do it with a simple function. Your angles equals radians your angle. And this function would convert uh, radians into degrees. Unexpected, expecting, why? Maybe. Nope. Uh. I'm not sure what's going on. Not sure what's going on. <laughs> so let's uh, do it a different way. Let's do it a different way where we use our angle. Where we use our angle we could put it here just put it here not the best solution I admit not the best solution but I don't want to google now how to what did I do wrong if you know what I did wrong please leave it in the comments I'm curious what's wrong here <coughs> maybe it, uh, maybe I should put it somewhere else okay anyway now it works.
it works yeah it works but now this angle it's too steep uh, so okay let's get rid of this uh, let's for example use angle to check it like 45 and yeah as you can see it now goes starts from very different angles and what about 90 Oh, uh, it's going very fast. Maybe like 30. Forty. Ten. Okay, I like this one. I like this one. But now, of course, you can't change it dynamically with LFO or noise or something else, and you will get another look. And by the way, I would like to have a smaller canvas. So, uh, the next thing. Now, every time the it starts from a, our worm starts from different positions. And that's because the starting points are defined with random. And the random functions is here. And uh, we could do something with it. First of all, let's try to use the built-in touch designer GLSL noise. So let's copy the beginning. Let's comment this. And it's in Touch Designer we have two functions. Um, we could find this here uh, to the parallel noise and to the simplex noise. So let's use it goes, uh, it gives you the result between 0, 1, and 1 as a float. And as input, it need, requires the vector 2, 3, or 4. So it's kind of sim similar to noise top, noise top with uh, simple Perlin 2D or 4D and simplex. Okay, let's try to use it. 2D simplex noise. Let's use VEC2 and let's use a seed which comes from, from a code. And for example, our U time parameter because it's dynamic. And let's see what we have now. Hmm, interesting. Interesting because our touch designer goes gives us between 0, 1 and 1 and in this code it works like it puts starts uh, on diagonal. Probably you could multiply it as done here by 2, minus 1, but it's just interesting to use the built-in noise to see how it will work and how will it affect how it will affect uh, the result. And again, you could change it dynamically. Oh, by the way, uh, the thing that I want to show to you is as you remember we start from this code and switch to this code and we could do it in dots as well remember we use enclad function let's have a two option two variants of code uh, <laughs> v1 and v2 and let's put this 
uncommented version in v1 and this version I think this version yeah. here let's make a switch call it variant for example and let's reference it in the code so the syntax was uh, include uh, this kind of brackets I don't know how to call it in English um, variant and open include file variant why is this because we need a uh, space and by the way it's a uh, absolute or relative path uh, so we have uh, our code in the same in the same level of our network and if you put it on upward you could reference it as, as like this it's a standard uh, touch designer references so for example now we ca could do it like this we could start from this option and switch into this one next next uh, it's still random so let's change a random into something non-random non-random all right uh, let's add a circle let's add a circle with the same amount of points as we need our worms if you refer reference it like this you will actually head hmm. oh okay <laughs> interesting if you choose the open arc and division 50 it would g give you 51 points if you choose a closet if you give it to give you 50 points i usually use the open arc because it's i don't know because i use it so in this case i need it minus one so i have in the end 50 points let's convert it to job we have now txty it would be our uh, it would be our starting position we don't need tz tz so let's get rid of tz delete delete channels tz uh, and here we have our vector 4 it requires initialization it requires the position so x y and we have it here uh, direction so angle of direction and the lifetime and here in the code lifetime always equals 1 we could try to play with it as well so let's have let's use a noise chop noise chop as a direction we need the same amount uh, samples uh, 
uh, are frames yeah frames I always forgot how to which which one to choose but we need uh, in the end have the 50, uh, 50f 50f and so on and this let's call it uh, what was it what was it direction let's call it direction direction and let's have constant we don't need single samples so frames full, full, full. and let's call it lifetime where 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 of course you could play and instead of constant lifetime like in the original you could try to use a non constant lifetime Let's merge it. Mm, let's add a new, call it mm, initialization. And how to pass the chop into your shader? If you want to pass a chop, you will use the arrays arrays uh, so put your chop here choose a vector form because we have four and choose a texture buffer and give it a name and because it's uh, a sampler I start with letter S in it let's copy this name and you need to uh, say that you have this uh, this texture buffer it's uniform Sampler buffer, sampler buffer as in it. So now you could use it. Where our initialization? Here is our initialization. Let's make it in one string so it would be easier to understand. Let's copy let's paste let's comment and we need to make some changes we need to make some changes here uh, let's first uh, because it uses vector 2 2 uh, uh, vector 2 here and the third variable here it would be simpler to firstly define it somewhere else init equals um, it's again text of fetch text of fetch oh, oops uh, text of fetch is init And we need integer with u with our Jalfra curve. Uh, the same as here. Okay, so let's leave our canvas. Here as a vector two, we would use uh, we would use our 
init and first two uh, first two values from here. So x y and here we would use three point four. I don't know. Let's make it single and then we will amplitude our we and then we set amplitude of our noise as we need. As in it uh, y and as in it v. And I hope it if expecting if something is wrong, something is wrong. What's wrong here? Oh, here should be that. Here should be this in it. Dun 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 dun. Let me think. Maybe it's again something with for the letter X and Y. So let's try to use R G B A as I explained to you before. Uh, no, something doesn't work. Oh, I forgot here, semicolon. Oh, expression left or G is not a struct, B is not a struct, do, 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 do. Oh, because it's not, yeah, we already defined it here, so we need to, oh my god. All right, now it's work and it start from, hmm. It's not what I expected, really. But on the other hand, uh, because it's from, because it's a circle, and it gives us uh, the coordinates from what, from minus one to one, and this shader interprets it in a way that it's from minus one on x to one on the other hand. So you could uh, either do a math here or do a math inside a shader itself. I wouldn't do it right now because it's, mm, it's relatively simple. Probably you already have ideas how to do it. So I leave it to you as an exercise. And let's try to play with noise. With a direction. Let's. Mm, I suppose it's again, it was radiance. So maybe I'll change it to radiance in it B. So I could use the degrees here. And I set amplitude as, uh, for example, 180, so it could start in different directions. It's a bit hard to see with this shader. Let's try to use this one. Yeah, and as you can see, it starts in very different directions. And it probably, it's always the same. What's why it's always the same, it's because we don't have any animation of our noise. So let's have it. Now it should 
start in different direction and let's make our noise a more Yeah, but the problem here is because our position always the same after we draw the one cycle uh, everything it stops because the next worm will try to grow from the same point and it's already occupied so it's die instantly and it couldn't uh, grow again and again so we need to have a little bit of uh, difference in our starting points and there is a way to do it uh, to use uh, another noise uh, no probably it's not done like this oh okay let me show you first so if i choose the radius it's uh, oops not the one it starts to grow again so let's have a noise let's have a noise here with the same let's call it noise same amount of symbols And by the way, in this case, we would don't need to animate this noise because we will animate this one. We will animate this one, and it would be quite and let's add a math. And in math we probably we will add we could use different, we could multiply, we could add, and we could use the other function. Let's combine it by adding. And this is too much, so let's, as amplitude said, it's 0 0.2, and let's see what's going on. And let's set it again to radius 1, radius 1. So as you could see, it starts from a different positions. It's not a mar much of variation, but you could add a variation by setting an amplitude, by changing how fast it will translate, and so on and so on. And let's change again to one to see what's going on here. okay nice and again if you want to use the both cases you could do it the same way as we did here so you could have two options put it somewhere in the dot and choose the uh, the options in switch dot so what else what else what else and I think the last thing I want to show you let me switch back to noise version and all right maybe let's add as you can see this uh, grows kind of slowly and the easy way to deal with it because we don't have any speed component here in the shader it grows one pixel by by time and you can you couldn't change it well i mean you could change it but it would uh, looks ugly i tried believe me <laughs> so the other way would be a passing this shader several times like if I set pass number of passes to 3 it will start to grow much faster mm -hmm. 
And if I set to 7, it's even more faster, as you could see. And here I want to show you the thing I did before. Probably you have seen it. It's a branch and path with a nice shader. And I share it in my GitHub I called Shader Toy TD Ports. And original have a. Oops, no, not this one, this one. And original have a four buffers with the same code because it's a shader to way of speeding up things. And I didn't know this uh, past trick. So I did the same in my shader to conversion. I, so I have uh, four buffers with the very same code. But now I know that I could, and if I get rid of this, everything still works, but very slowly. But if I change it to the number of passes to four passes again, it's again very speed up. So if you use this, sh this shader to conversion, probably it's a good idea to do the same. The next thing is how to uh, how to add something here because it's feedback loop. Let's start from I don't know transform and let's try to move it and everything moves. But in this shader, it's it's not working very fine because. Uh, the shader uses the position. You could see the last row. It gives the position. It gives the shader the current position of every worm. And when you start to move in it, it doesn't works very well. And we also have this canvas. By the way, we could get rid of it this draw limiting margin, we could get rid of it. So now we don't have it, but still not really nice looking. But in some, but in other shaders, even in other option with this shader, it could give interesting results. But with other shaders like branching path, if you insert the same translation, transforming, value here by one pixel the result it's kind of interesting you could also rotate it and so in some shaders it works and it produces a interestingly looking results well it's not super interestingly but you could uh, change the parameters and have something interesting. And maybe you saw in my Instagram a couple of weeks ago, I post some examples. And here I have this smile. Let's try to reproduce it. So let's get rid of transform. Let's have uh, some <clears throat> text or some form. Let's use, I don't know. Let's use a banana. Let's use a banana. Gold, old, good banana. So we insert a composite here. We switch this. And now you need to find, okay, it's Maybe it's, let's try over. Will it work? Uh, not bad, not bad. Uh, but most of the time it's better to insert a threshold 
and use a white so if it goes okay let me look how I did it before because I don't remember which type of composite I did use it's in every shader it could be different so what did I use I use under under and I under and the black color okay because some shaders works better with black some shaders works with white or needs the value equals one in some particular channel for example in red or in alpha so it's always try and error uh, po, 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 po. Oh, it wouldn't work. Okay, anyway, I think you got an idea. I think you got an idea. And uh, probably the super last thing <laughs> I want to show you is how to build the user interface. Sometimes you work here, but sometimes you would like to have us. Tak, let's get rid of reset button. Uh, don't display. So you add a cu customized component and adds a parameter here and parameters and if for example I will show you with a number of worms num you add this parameter you give it a name like number of worms you could set its default for example 50 works well and the range, I don't know, from 10 to 200 worms seems enough to me. And let's add some different parameter, for example, speed. I wouldn't add all the parameters, I just give you a, an idea. Uh, speed and the default value, it should be the integer integer the default value equals one and the range from one to five and let's add also a color mm. let's add one color color one rgba and parameter okay and <coughs> now in this container Let's look in our result. I think it's called final top. Mm -hmm. Let's switch back to random. What's wrong? Undefined it variable enum. What? Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Okay. So let's split our screen. Uh, let's go upper. And in parameters, we have our parameters and we could set it here. So instead of um, using parameters from here, we could use it from the customized component. So let's change, let's uh, copy parameter. And I prefer to use paste bind in, oops, I did something wrong, paste bind. 
uh, what bind does is if I move here it changes by the way it should be also integer let me again customize component unum and change it to integer because we couldn't have the not integer number of worms and also what bind this does is if I change the number from here it changes it here as well okay number of forms good let's add a reset button as well customize component uh, reset it would be momentary at parameters move it to bottom okay uh, copy parameter paste reference let's check yeah it works and speed we will use here copy parameter past is here let's check let's speed up everything speeded up let's slow down everything slow down start slowly speed up yeah works well and a color for example let's switch back to our ramps let's switch back to our ramps Be good to do to do what's wrong here and let's change for example the this color into this color again a copy parameter paste bind copy parameter Paste bind, change it to, for example, yellow. Why it's not working? Because our alpha is zero, we don't need alpha equals zero. And now we have different color palette. And of course you could do it with the other color as well. So, yeah and that's how you start to come customize your component and of course you could you need to do it with other values as well and you probably should to add it's it's like exercise to you you should add the seed as a parameter because maybe you will like to play with a seed of a noise probably probably you could play with this i don't know what is this but maybe it it uh, means something play with this play with this play with other with every value find what works add new parameters maybe include the other variants from this worms this worms here maybe it wouldn't work with the all of them especially with this one because it the code is a little bit different but the most of the code definitely you could add this one i checked uh, i support this one so you could check uh, probably you could add at least four of them in the in your shader by the way uh, the shaders with the same number are equals the, there is only difference in parameters so the graffitis one and the graffitis one b is the same the only, only colors difference and two b and two it's also the same it's, the angles is different the colors is ah, the, same, the colors is the same so you don't need to add all 10 of them only some and other work with the parameters.
Oof. It was a long tutorial again. <laughs> Interesting. I couldn't make uh, short tutorials. I don't know why. It's always a long one. So probably it's uh, time to stop recording and see you next time. And if you like this tutorial, you could support me on Patreon. If many people support me, I will start to make more tutorials. And I also have some bonuses. Probably I will upload this uh, whole thing into Patreon when I cleaned up and make a proper user interface. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments or in Instagram. See you. Bye bye.